I have a question. Is it possible for someone to be a hype beast and humble at the same time? I'd like to think so. Good evening, everybody. It's the guy that killed the electric car here. Welcome back to another episode of... It's just car, complex, party time, excellent. That's right, people! The show is back! Yeah! Yeah, hells yeah! This show is back in the game! So let's just jump right into it. I will debate you! Uh, the last episode I made was about the sneaker resale market, and I actually decided to take that video down because I don't think I explained how annoying the hype community can be when it comes to reselling, or something to that effect. I'll get more to that later. Right now I want to discuss the criticism that I got for that episode. Because I actually received a lot of comments saying that I was unintentionally flexing and that, well, I shouldn't. It really made me think about what message I was sending, so I rewatched the video and I was like, Oh my god. I am flexing to my subscribers. Listen, I don't want to flex. Alright, that's the last thing I want to do. I don't want to be like, Ooh, I have the new Yeezy, so you need to bow down to me, you filthy peasant. The way I see it, your shoes don't count for shit when it comes to your social life. Even if, even if you have a pair of Nike Air Mags. I just don't want to seem like the kind of guy that constantly flexes their shoes, or their shirts, or whatever this is. Well, it's not even that. It's like not being a douchebag. Okay, let's generalize things a little bit. I might wear these clothes, but I'm not going to walk up to somebody and say, Hey, 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 have you seen my new kid see ghosts hoodie? Cost me 850 bucks. This is a term that I like to call being a humble hype beast. Because there's nothing necessarily wrong with buying expensive shoes or expensive clothing. It just becomes a massive problem when you're fucking obnoxious about it. Because you don't see me flexing any of my clothing, but you see people like this idiot right here, Rice Gum, who made it rain on a homeless person while coincidentally wearing a gray box logo and Zebra 350s. This guy's literally the worst person on YouTube. He's radiating the most douchey personality possible. And he's flexing to his subscribers. That's actually what he's doing. I don't want to be anywhere near that kind of person. I just want to look fresh. Is that such a crime? Lots of other famous people follow this philosophy. Like for instance, Jeff Goldblum. He's a really nice and smart guy and he's been doing really good things in the world. And you know what? He's one of the freshest looking people I've seen. And that, my friends, is the kind of hype beast I want to be. Well, Jeff, uh, what happened? <laughs> oh no. We're all equals, and that's good. You shouldn't segregate someone because of their race, their gender, their age, or better yet, their clothes. Criticizing someone because of their clothes is like the most low thing you could do to someone because they're wearing the things that they want to wear. They're not going to listen to you if you judge them. Alright, I think I talked about that a little bit too much, so let's no longer beat around the bush. Let's talk about why the sneakerhead community is kind of annoying. Hey, how much for them J's? Thousand dollars. So Let's say you're like me, and you're trying to get a newly restocked pair of the Air Jordan New Beginnings pack. Let's say that Nike was nice enough to restock it after all of the outcry caused by the amount of shoes they made. You're confident with yourself that after all of these months of striking out, you know you're going to get it. Except, it's not there. You figure it's just a website error, so you refresh the page. But it's still not there. You check the news websites, and to your horror, you came to the Nike website at the wrong time. You were half an hour late on the restock. You rush over to secondhand market stores all across the internet, and to your horror, the sneakers are reselling over five times their original retail price. That's mainly why being a sneakerhead can be such a pain in the ass sometimes, because you have to wake up early or stay up late to make sure you don't miss a release or a restock. And if you miss a release, you have to pay even more money for a pair on the secondhand market, like StockX and Stadium Goods. This is a term that experts call artificial scarcity. 
You know, companies like Nike and Supreme, they do it all the time. They make these products rarer by making less copies of it, and they might inflate the cost a little bit as well. And when you miss a release, it sucks to be you. Pay me more money, you humble troglodyte. Another probable factor in the equation is popularity. You want the shoes? Well, so does everybody else on the planet. Everyone else is waiting for a pair of sneakers to release, just like you are. This is always the case when Adidas comes out with a new pair of Yeezys, and they sell out within 0.2 seconds. I'm not even exaggerating, here's proof. And another thing to remember, it's not just one person who's buying these shoes. Companies that try to resell them are buying them in bulk. So that might be a reason as to why they sell out so fast. I say might because I'm not 100% sure if this is true or not. Okay, companies like Nike and Adidas don't allow people to see how many sneakers are being bought by how many people. But, I do know that the website GOAT does have that buy new button, so there's a little bit of evidence that points to that. But I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. The buy now button implies that the shoes have never been worn by anyone and they're fresh out of the box. So, that seems true. But there is no way to know for sure. Now I'd like to transition into something else entirely. Have you ever noticed that resale sites have astronomical prices when it comes to rare sneakers? You should say yes, because it happens all the time. Like, you would see a pair of Travis Scott Dunks be sold exclusively, exclusively on his website, and not the Nike release calendar, which is where most people get their hype shoes. And guess what? They would sell out within 10 minutes! without warning. Not only is this frustrating enough because they didn't even appear on Nike's release calendar, but the price premium is over a thousand percent more than retail. Like at first this must seem like an outrage, right? These people are expecting a ton of money for having the shoe in the first place. I know, it's tyranny, but I do think we might be able to relate to them. Really, if we managed to snap a pair of these shoes before they sold out, we too would be wanting validation for our work. We stayed up all night waiting for these shoes to release. We spammed left click until the buy now button appeared. We entered all of our payment information at rapid speed and we put in our shipping address the same way. And now, we're good. Like, the order has been confirmed, the email confirmation was just sent to you, and you know you're getting the sneakers. Okay, so you can sit back and relax knowing that you have these sneakers in your possession and you can now sell them on the second-hand market. And these people don't have bots, mind you. So the next time you see a reseller ask for an astronomical price for a pair of sneakers, now you know why. This is going to be my last episode of Just Carp Complaints on this topic, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope, it, I, hope I explained it enough to you so that you can understand. Please be sure to subscribe for more videos where I literally can't even. And if you like this video, give it a like and consider sharing it with your friends. That's greatly appreciated. Take care, everybody. Stay home and stay safe. Bye.